Okay, I'm back, ready for more pandemonium. An unwelcome visitor. It's a nice eye. Cheese, cheese, I made a breakthrough. After uncountable days and nights, I finally hearkened to the crystal's whispers, and I must say... Professor Claudian, where are your manners? Well, I understand all too well your enthusiasm. I must remind you that even the most academically inclined prefer a composed recounting of events. Ah, yes, of course. My apologies, Cheese, being consumed by my research. For so long, I'm afraid I've quite forgotten how to engage in civilized conversation. In that case, perhaps we should start from the beginning. Oh, God. The crystal set adrift upon the ethereal tides containing the memories of a party yet unknown. I cried out for deliverance from Pandemonium, where the ancients kept volatile creations under lock and key. You yourself witnessed the power devouring the facility from within, and the advent of a divine monstrosity wrought a mythic beast and powerful mage. Fortunately, your martial prowess and the combined magical talents of your companions Themis and Eric Thonios was sufficient to restore order to the circles of Asphodelos, but the greater threat remains. In the depths of Pandemonium, a presence yet stirs, its intentions and identity shrouded in mystery. That is the issue at hand, is it not? Since you returned to us, we worked tirelessly to discern the nature of the crystal and the process I detected an anomalous etheric signature, which I believe arose from the memory stored within. Analysis of this pattern suggested a feeling of loss or yearning, specifically the yearning to be made whole, and indeed ambient readings have revealed a faint but identical signature. This can only mean that another such crystal exists in our time. So my friend, I must depart to search for it forthwith by tracing the matching etheric signature to its source. I believe it will be a simple matter to find our crystal's twin. Professor, will this expedition be carried out only by us, or will Cheese grace us with her protection? I'm afraid she has more pressing matters to attend to, my dear Rusina, Rusin, whatever, namely to seek out the secrets which lie nestled within Pandemonium, where this all began. From all that we have heard, it appears that time traversal from the Crystal Tower is not fluid, that is to say, one can but travel in predetermined intervals. It would be prudent to check in on occasion in case there are any unanticipated changes. As for you, my loyal assistants, I would ask you to remain here and continue cataloging the ancient creations. You can't mean, do you intend to search for the crystal on your own? Well, yes, that would be the most efficient use of resources, would it not? In fact, I have already commissioned a ship and pilot for that very purpose. I trust you to take good care of the laboratory in my absence. Laboratory, laboratory, whatever. Hmm. I apologize for that somewhat abrupt departure. When progress is in sight, Professor Claudian tends to become blind to all else. Indeed, and he has been worse than usual. While I cannot fault him for his excitement, I do wish he would spare a thought for those around him. For reasons unknown, the crystal seems loath to be overheard, much as it spoke only to you last time, none but the professor has been able to capture its ethereal yearning, which has served only to convince him that he can solve this puzzle on his own. Surely after some time alone, he'll come to remember how valuable we are. The research for this crystal seemed to be a simple enough matter. Let him have his adventure, and upon his return, I'm certain he'll be back to his usual self. As for you, Cheese, it may be best to return to Pandemonium as Professor Claudian suggested. Speaking of which, I did have a request of my own to make. Traveling to Pandemonium requires you pass through Elpis, correct? There is something I would have you investigate in my stead. While those creations confined within Pandemonium are considered to be failures, I doubt that's their whole story. Barring exceptional cases, they must have been under observation in Elpis before being co consigned to their shackles. If you know anything about the ancients, it's what they would have it's that they would have kept thorough records of the results. Ah, brilliant. Delving into these records may shed light on creatures cheese has yet to encounter. If your theory proves correct, that is. While there are no guarantees, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Certainly beats the current strategy of rushing forward blindly with only her strength to carry the day. For your own sake as well as ours, please unearth what information you can. Uh, 
uh, where? Oh, those are the, what do you call it? Oh, there's another blue quest there. I wonder what that one's for. You seek records of Pandemonium's creation. Semester Themis has just finished perusing the very same. Should not be surprised that we both arrived at the same conclusion. Luckily, I have saved you the trouble and gleaned what information I could. Also, you know each other. I was dreading having to once again scour the archives, but perhaps instead I'll rest for a spell. If there's nothing else, I shall take my leave. As should we, for uh, I have undone the warding sigil blocking the entrance to Abyssos. I came here to merely chase an idle suspicion while awaiting your return. Fortunately, while Pandemonium's protective wards continue to be assailed by our unknown foe, there have been no fluctuations so great as to make me doubt Eric Thonios' capacity to keep watch over Asphodelos while I'm away. He works diligently to master internment that he might deliver the creations back to their cages by his own hand. I thought it best to give him time to hone his craft. And since fate has brought us both here, I would ask you to accompany me while I tend to another matter, more idle suspicions that I would like to chase down. Rest assured it shall not take long. I simply have a few questions to ask an acquaintance of mine. Come, he has agreed to meet us near the Neus, Neus, whatever, to Pandemonium. Okay, I'll go there. Excuse me. So that's the first four. I think they said they're gonna add the last part of this raid in 6.45. So I wonder what, how long they usually take after like they do the I guess they always do like a, you know, a point four, so a point four five is next, then a point five, then a point five five. So, I wonder how long the point fives take. As I have pondered our expedition into Pandemonium, I cannot help but be mystified by how strongly the warders we encountered felt for La Habrea. Whether it be good, be for good or ill, Hesperos and Eric Thonios were two sides of the same coin. The former looked to his mentor with absolute devotion, while the latter looks to his father with bald hatred. He's malding. I would not expect a familiar such as you to understand this, but such extreme emotions toward a single individual are quite rare indeed. Naturally, I feel gratitude toward my mother and father, yet we are all equals in the larger picture of the star. This view is not unique to myself, it is more or less accepted as the way of things. By contrast, the researchers of Pandemonium seem to view La Habrea the feeling approaching obsession. Whether driven by love or hate, they have all been drawn to him. There are many other aspects of the facility's particulars I found troubling besides. I decided the best course of action would be to go straight to the source and pose my questions to a member of the wards of to a member of the words of La Habrea. My apologies to have kept you waiting, Master Themis. I understand you are conducting an investigation of Pandemonium and wish to know of its origins. Indeed, in particular, I wish to know why exactly Pandemonium was built directly under Elpis. The facility is overseen by the words of La Habrea, after all. Why keep it so close to Elpis, whose governing body has no say in its day-to-day -day operations? First, I thought it to be simply a matter to be simply a matter a matter of convenience. Those creations which were deemed failures by the researchers of Elpis could be easily ushered into their new homes, 
Imagine my surprise when a trip to the archives revealed that many of the creations were sent from organizations beyond Elpis, including from the words of Laha Brea themselves. Given this, albeit limited information, I cannot but feel that the academia and the whatever would have been a more fitting uh, lo locale. What does Elpis have that cannot be found there? These are fitting questions and ones we have asked ourselves many times in recent years. Alas, the nature of Pandemonium's construction does not lend itself to relocation. When first it was built, circumstances weren't as they are now. As you surmise, the majority of the creations kept within Pandemonium were sent from Elpis. Yet, as the years pass, interests change, failures and creations deemed too flawed even to cement to Elpis paradoxically drew the attention of Pandemonium's researchers. It is quite the change, and in fact it almost runs counter to the facility's original purpose. Who is it that decides which creations will be the subject of research? Master Laha Breyer. Brea. Such authority is reserved for the chief key ward, and he has taken it upon himself to step into that role. So if Pandemonium's resources were being misused, it would be under Laha Brea's authority, correct? I know, I know not what you're suggesting, but the keywords also hold some sway within the facility. Not even Master Lahabre would be free from their scrutiny. They are duty bound to report any irregularities as soon as possible. Although I admit, as of late, the communication has been somewhat sporadic. But we, we but recently received a report from one of the keywords stating that all is well within Pandemonium's halls. Really, and you are certain that a keyword sent it? Yes, of course, our communications suffered a temporary obstruction, but I can assure you that the words did their due diligence in confirming the identity of the sender. Thank you. This information will be helpful to my investigation. That will be all for my prying. Then I shall take my leave. While you are yet permitted to conduct your investigation freely, I must remind you that the warder's work is delicate, and it would be remiss to disturb them for longer than is necessary. <clears throat> All is well, a blatant lie, and to that we both can we can both attest. One of the remaining key wards is most certainly in league with the party behind this. Let us hurry. I know not why our adversary sent that report, but just plain that we must return to Pandemonium with haste. Well, I'm glad it's a key ward and not what's his face, because it's gonna be like watch it be what's his face, and like he got corrupted or some shit. At the what? Oh. Cannot guess as to why this false report has arisen now, but it certainly bodes ill, as does the knowledge that our mysterious mastermind has at least one more keyworded puppet. Regardless, they have tipped their hand, and we would be remiss to leave Eric Thonios at the mercy of their machinations. Let us hope no harm has befallen him. Not quite. I've traced these sigils countless times, yet still I lack the strength to maintain the spell. And now time works against me. I can no longer be victim of my own ineptitude. What? Who goes there? Oh, I didn't even left click. <laughs> there is something to be admired in such single-minded effort, even if your methods leave much to be desired. You allowed this familiar to catch you unawares. Have you set your sights so high as to forget you walk upon the earth? I know this creature, a familiar of the phoenix, but that monster is locked away. 
that it is, in spite of the trouble I went to, I went to in freeing it, I might add, begrudge me for addressing you in this ill-fitting form, if you must, but with control of Asphodelos arrested from my grasp to simply the best I can offer you. Hide if you will, but mark my words, I will find you and make you pay for the chaos you've sown. Now, now, there is no need for such hostility. A calm heart stays the course, the wisdom of La Habrea, your father. And how would you know what wisdom he speaks? I have heard those words many times, the scolding of a tutor whose student struggled to grasp the most rudimentary lessons, seething with disgust. No. I have not told that to anyone, not even keyword Hesperos, that can only mean one thing. That still you insist on mocking me. Stop this farce, La Habrea. At last you move to keep up, pity that you remain behind, nevertheless. What? As ever you are, always you fail to learn, fail to understand, fail to act. And though fate deigned to offer an escape, you remain here. You are bereft of magical prowess and common sense both. But you need not despair, dull though you may be, you are yet indispensable to Pandemonium's great experiment. Uh, there's the affection I remember. Tell me, did I ever once measure up to your expectations? You shall take pride in that and rejoice to see your wish fulfilled. What? What wish? Come, and all shall be revealed that all this rage, this hatred, is but a consequence of ignorance. Our desires align more than you know. What are you? Hmm, uninvited guests join our reunion. It seems fortune no longer favors you. I feel like I gotta look up La Habrea so I can remember his face from... A I'm pretty sure you kill him in A Realm Reborn. Or maybe like the part after when, when Breda dies. I don't remember who you kill in that office. Do you think I have any interest in listening to your prattle, let alone bowing to your will? I am no longer a child and my faith lies with those who have earned it. Maybe we don't because I feel like he'd remember me. But be, no, I said I met them. So these are the heroes who brought Hesperos slow, even as a pow even as power divine flowed through his veins. Just plain there are worthier subjects to contend with. Excuse me. Thank you. If you had shown up even a moment later, I shudder to think what would have become of me. There's something I must tell you. I know who's behind this. There's but one person who can thrall over familiar creation and keyword alike. Lahabrea. Mass of the Father. And so there can be but one conclusion, La Habrea was the driving force behind this chaos from the start. There is logic to that. There are a few with the wherewithal uh, to even consider experimentation on such a scale, let alone the capacity to create demigods from man and beast with the rest of us none the wiser. Considering the magnitude of his work with the convocation and the words, his relatively minor rule as chief keyword comes under little scrutiny. Even as it provides him the authority to wield dangerous magics, it may serve as veil and mantle both. Still, I find the notion hard to accept. The misdeeds perpetrated here could not have been done by the La Habrea I know. 
You have met him, yes? Do you think he is capable of this? Oh, am I going to remember him? Okay, here's his mask. La Habre is capable of far more than you know. Is he? So you believe La Habre had to be a man of few scruples if it brings his goals closer in reach? That alone should be enough, but let me assure you La Habre holds nothing so dear as his own ambition. While he may not be one to let emotion stand in the way of his mission, I cannot believe there are no depths to which he would not stoop. Although we met but briefly, the impression he left on me stands in stark contrast to your evaluation. Though his methods are ever unorthodox, they seem guided by a firm understanding of what is just. There's only there's one way to find out for certain. We delve deeper into pandemonium and pull back the curtain on this mystery ourselves. A wise course, I would not deny the truth, but I saw it with my own eyes, even if it was discomfiting to behold. Then we must move forward with no excess of caution. Mahabrea or whomever is behind this is likely spread their tentacles into every corner of pandemonium. We can only safely we can safely assume the other key wards won't greet us with open arms. Agreed, let us make our way through Abyssos one careful step at a time. I shall stay by Erichthonios' side in case our enemies think to target him again. Could I trouble you to take the vanguard? Thank you. As a precaution, I shall safeguard you with a simple spell. This will ensure that even should we become separated, my phantom warriors will still come to your aid. If it does come to battle, Keywords, magics will put us at a disadvantage once again. Luckily, we have you to even the scale somewhat. I trust you shall be liberal with your weight. All right, and do I unlock a what do you call it? Fist circle now accessible. And per usual, we'll resume uh, when the uh, when it pops or whatever. Okay, and it popped for the second time. Let's see if everyone accepts this time. Now it's on a tank. Close to accepting them all. Pretty cool. Proto carbuncle. Are those the smart small little cute things?
I wonder why he called Ryan Gosling a pussy or... Topaz stones. Well, Oh, shit. <laughs> That's funny. It was there. One tank. Oh, we lost two DPS though.
We buy it at the end. Smile nod. I thought I accepted it. Did I just get the stuff? Pretty much. I gotta use this. So this is where research is conducted on creations imbued with poisons and venoms. Eric Thonios, whatever. Excuse me. And I were conveyed not far from here. It seems our foe is finding it more difficult to surprise us. Fortunately for you, since they appear particularly keen to see you dispatched as quickly as possible. Even alone, you are a force to be reckoned with. Part of me is glad you emerged victorious that I might observe you further. Were the circumstances different, I might thank you for keeping my son alive for this long, but I believe we can forego introductions unless I have misread you. Oh, maybe it's a different La Habrea. Not too familiar, Paragon. La Habrea. Why do you say La Habrea? Passively perceptive, yes, I am La Habrea of the Convocation of Fourteen. You surely are who you claim to be, then answer this question. That can wait. Oh. Uh, what is this? Now this is curious. The trap I will at your feet reacts to Aether, but you remain unaffected. Such thin aether and an unfamiliar composition besides, it is of no matter, I suppose. A more direct approach will beget the same results. I would advise you to think carefully before deciding your next action. Striking down here in Eric Clonius' wish shall remain unfulfilled. Never again shall he meet Athena. Mother, you would dare hide behind her name. Listen where, well, Eric Thonios, we are of the same mind concerning your mother. You have your allies for protection, so what harm is there in hearing me out? Eric Thonios, wait. There is a question I must needs ask first. If you truly are La Habrea, why speak such blatant lies? Bitter in defeat, are we? Say my name. A simple request. Then miss was it? Trifle soon forgotten as you are you? As are what? I have my answer. La Habrea that I knew took pride in the convocation and would never suffer. It's denigration. He's solely his station with this farce. 
so it's not really La Habrea. Themis, what are you saying? La Habrea and I hardly saw eye to eye, but I know his voice when I hear it. Indeed, he makes a passing fine imitation in appearance and manner. However, the real La Habrea would never call me by the name Themis. Oh, there's La Habrea. What trouble have you gotten yourself into, Elidibus? Who's Elidibus again? Imposter, you have no right to claim that form, that mask. What? Who? I don't know. So it's a mask that sickened me to wear. The mask of La Habrea, a man who values his position, his position above all, who would murder his own wife in pursuit of duty. Yet yeah, you would assume my name and wield powers that are mine by right, and he worth you may have hinges on what on that which you so despise such trite provocations i will not be goaded into finishing this ere my work is done eric thonios listen well i am hephaestos hepatitis and it is i whom you should call father Well, he does have red hair, like him. Oh, his looks a little more orange now. What in the name of creation? We would do well not to stand idle while our enemy is about. I believe in an expl I believe an explanation is in order. Elidibus, let us return to safety so you may provide it. Oh, that sounds more like the La Habrea I know. Did I kill an Elidibus? Before we depart, however, I must offer you an apology. As La Habrea said, I am Elidibus, one of the convocation and emissary of their will. For reasons which do not involve you, it was necessary to hide my identity while investigating this place. Still, that hardly excuses my deception. I had a feeling, whatever your name is, you're still famous to me. I know a thing or two about deception myself. That is reassuring to hear. The burdens we bear are heavy enough without adding a grudge to their weight. In any case, we have pressing matters to attend to. Let us do as La Habrea suggested and return to the gates. We can speak there. Please help him save him. As you're aware of by now, uh, I am known as Lydibus, after my dear friend Asm and I detected irregularities in Pandemonium. We decided the best course of action would be to hide my station as I conducted my investigation. I am sure La Habrea as well is eager to find out why I hid who I was. Uh, so I shall save that story for later. First, I would sp like to speak of you, my friend. Although neither Asm nor I had ever met you in the flesh, you came with her highest recommendation. That alone was enough for me to accept you as an ally without question. That somewhere in the world, a guiding star so similar to herself was out there amused Asm to no end. Uh, there was not a shade of doubt in her heart that you would be a formidable ally. Furthermore, I heard 
I've heard stories that Mistress Vinat, would, who held that the position of Asm previously, journeyed with a familiar such like yourself that made the decision to trust you all the easier. Uh, let's do that. She too now dons the white robes of an advisor. If she placed her absolute faith in you, I knew I would be incapable of hands. Aware though, I was of the path you had walked. Uh, I had no interest in exposing you. I really wanted to meet you to travel by your side for a while. I may know but a small portion of your whole story, but that is enough for me to believe you would never lead me astray. I wanted to tell you that. Critical hit. Keywords goal. Gal. I don't know how long it's been since we last spoke, La Habrea, and truth be told, I had hoped we would never meet again. Excuse me, but I see now that I was fooled to think I would ever escape your meddling. Just what is that thing that called himself La Habrea, and why is he spitting image, the spitting image of your younger self? I find it hard to believe you've only just found out such a being was wreaking, wreaking havoc and pandemonium. Did you think matters would simply sort themselves out? Hmm. I suppose you deserve at least a cursory explanation. I was well aware of the anomalies occurring within Pandemonium, including the fact that Asm and Elidibus had taken it upon themselves to investigate. I saw no reason to insert myself into the situation. For a time, that was. Imagine my surprise when instead of a formal report from you and yours, I received a communication from one of the key wars, stating that research and operations were proceeding as usual. Well, Hephaestos' deception was almost childish in its simplicity. It became plain to me that your grasp on the situation was slipping. So you knew of his existence from the beginning? Blah, blah, blah. I can hardly imagine that you would suffer another to masquerade as one of the convocation, not without good reason at least. As you well know, the name La Habre is but a marker of my station, just not the name I was born with. Hephaestos has claimed that for himself. I cannot fault him for it, as he is my other half, in a manner of speaking. He knows all that I know, my equal in every way, yet within his heart is not but greed, envy, and desire, all the emotions that we are loath to acknowledge within ourselves. If what you say is true, what purpose would such a being serve? He is the product of experimentation gone awry, Ari. A reminder of the days when I was young, yet young and reckless. I thought I'm still the way for good, but it seems time has a way of unearthing the shame we bury. When he spoke of my mother, he looked at you with venom in his eyes, blamed you for her death. Tell me, was he right to do so? His words were but the ramblings of a tortured mind. The hatred and despair he endures has warped his view of the world irreparably. And now that he's awakened, he must be put to rest. If he succeeds in breaching Pandemonium's protective wards, he shall invite disaster unto our star. As chief keyword of Pandemonium, it is my duty to decide the proper course of action. As such, I declare that all research shall be summarily, summarily abandoned and the facility destroyed. What? You would leave the other warders to their doom? Tis a choice befitting La Habrea. Do you disagree? You speak of duty, and ours is to guide our star and the, its inhabitants upon the correct course. It is no surprise that you would choose annihilation of pandemonium if it's existence posed even the remotest risk to our people. Yet, as you can see by Eric Thonios' response, the decision is somewhat more nuanced than that. Asim and I grappled with this conundrum for some time, in fact. That is precisely why I chose to involve myself directly. It was the only way I could truly determine the best solution. And you need not trouble yourself with that further. The chief keyword must prevent the worst from occurring, no matter the cost. Your feelings, Elidibus, are of no consequence. Have you taken even a moment to consider another path? No. 
You spared nary a thought for aught but yourself and your duty. You have no idea of the trials we've endured, the foes that cheese has stood against. Cheese is it a being of such ether as I have never seen. What are you? She's the guiding star that shall lead us safely through this. Thanks to her stout arm and steadfast courage, we have subdued the mythic creations and returned them to their cells. Speaking of which, I would hear your opinion, Chiefs, as outsiders. Are we, we are in a unique position to look upon circumstances with our vision unclouded by attachment. What was that you said about being an emissary? It's too soon to give up on saving the others. Agreed. We still know next to nothing about Hephaestos, and I highly doubt La Habrea has been forthcoming with the truth. But we managed to regain control as of Asphodelos. He must be made to see that there's a merit in continuing on this path. I have it. Speak in your official capacity as the Litibus, the emissary. Judge which approach is more sound, and even the Habrea would be compelled to listen. The Elias cuts you. As the Litibus, I am duty bound to assess the matter from a position of impartiality. My opinion as Themis can carry no weight. You understand what that means, yes? I do. Even so, you walked with us all this time. See what we've seen. Based on that alone, I trust that you'll find the best way forward. Very well. Then in my capacity as emissary, I shall state my judgment. At present, there are merits both in destroying pandemonium outright and in taking time to rescue its researchers, and neither is yet an impossible task. Therefore, I judge that the most measured choice would be to continue upon our present course. We delve into abyssos, interring any mythic creations we encounter along the way. You have yet to witness Cheese's might and Eric Thonios' resolve. I would ask that you see our capabilities firsthand and only then decide if our endeavor is futile. If such is the will of the emissary, then I shall obey. However, if indeed I find your strength to be lacking, I trust there will be no objections to the immediate destruction of Pandemonium. You needn't worry about that. We won't fail. You are bolder than I remember. As you're even more tedious, and you're even more tedious than I remember. She's confined me when you're finished. Damn. Daddy issues. Eric Thonios is understandably frustrated, but if we are to conquer Abyssos, we must go forth and cl with clear heads, pray lend an ear to his troubles, that their weight might be lightened. Oh, you can't ride a mount? I just go through this. Oh. Oh. Almost had that smooth. You do have my gratitude, ill fit as I am to show it at the moment. Without your words to sway him, Mahabrea would have carried out his plan without a second thought. When at first uh, we realized the creations had slipped their bonds, the other keywords did all in their power to restore order. Even though they could have chosen escape, they remained to aid their allies. I'm certain not a soul among them would wish to see this facility erased from the world, and they don't deserve to be abandoned simply for carrying out their duty. And besides, Hephaestos has secrets yet untold, secrets that would be buried to pandemonium and reduced to rubble. I mean to uncover the truth behind his words, the truth of my mother. 
While La Habrea was quick to dismiss his claims, I failed to see what Hephaestos would gain by fabricating such a story. All I was told of my mother's death was that she perished in an accident. No one would say more. It was almost as if they feared saying more, in fact. Even if it was not La Habrea that dealt the fatal blow, we've seen with our own eyes how quickly he can condemn others to die. I only wish to know at last what befell her. What do you think, Chief? Does the La Habrea you know have any regard for the lives of others, or will he carry out his duty with another's blood on his hands? He was always a man who worked from the shadows. He once used my ally as a vessel for his own twisted ends. I have no idea what he might be like in this age. I have no idea what he might be like in this age. This age, just how long has it been since last you met? Regardless, I'd like to you to try and view him as he is now. Another opinion would be much appreciated. But it is plain there is much to consider. Thank you, Cheese. It's easy for me to get carried away by emotion when, where he's concerned. We should focus on the task at hand, providing, pro proving to La Habrea that we are capable of saving Pandemonium and its keepers. The most convincing way to do that will be to regain control of Abyssos. Although I'm loath to admit it, he would know more about those depths than any of us, and seeing as how we require every advantage we can afford, she's would you speak to him for us? He seems to have a special interest in your capabilities. And uh, may design to help and may deign to help at your suggestion, if only to see what you can do. Fifth circle, so now I'm on the sixth circle. Eric Thonios appears to have a deep trust in you, and Elidibus tells me you share some relation to Asm. Your unusual aether does not mark you as a familiar. It's unlike anything I have seen, even among the countless concepts I have observed. Think that I would encounter an existence I could not create by my own hand, Asm never ceases to surprise. The previous Asm was much the same, in taking the entirety of the star into consideration. She came to hold dear emotions and people that a more logical mind would have discarded. This made her act in her own self-interest more often than not. Just as you and Elidibus have conducted yourselves in this matter, the true danger of Asm's nature is of Asm's nature is its tendency to infect all those she comes into contact with. Emmett Selk said much the same, trust that I shall do not that would violate my duty. And yet you so frivolously invoked your authority as emissary to justify this little excursion. It matters little, however, only your deeds can speak for your for you now. You wish to know more of Abyssos, I take it. Although I no longer have control over many of its functions, I can yet sense what creations lie within. The chief keywords reach as far indeed. Well then, what do we have to look forward to? And since no creations of note, perhaps they have been made into fodder for experimentation, or perhaps they have been transferred to the deeper circles. Yet, uh, Hephaestos would never allow you safe passage. He has left a trial for you to overcome. I speak of Hegemon, whatever, keyword of Abyssos, although her presence is stained with marks of corruption, it is unmistakable. I knew her as a woman gifted in magic and blessed with a highly logical mind. While I can sense those qualities w within her still, there is something else at work. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that it's because she's already been twisted into Hemitheos, doubtless against her will. Chief Themis, we must rescue her from that cruel fate, and if we cannot, we can at least seal her away until we find a means to undo the damage. Your allies make you bold, Eric Thonios. I very much look forward to seeing how far they carry you. Damn, that dirty eye. 
Dirty side eye. Alright, six circle available. And I'm actually going to end the video here because it's been about, I think, an hour, close to an hour. So, penis, and I'll probably continue pandemonium later because Toasty's almost home. So, yeah, thank you to whoever may be watching, and penis. <laughs>